Hey everyone, welcome to DVSR's little corner of YouTube. Um, I'm just starting my channel out, so I haven't really had many videos on it yet, other than a couple of uh, videos regarding the LT1 as a battery test. But anyhow, this video is going to be regarding um, the iClover motion lights. They were sent to me by Kyle from iCloverLights.com um, for review. And basically, what, what these are, they're like motion or night lights for outside, like garden lights, things like that. And um, I've been testing these over the last week or so for various different uses around the yard, around the fence, cottage, things like that. And um, they're actually not bad, especially for the price point that these are at. Okay, first of, first of all, we'll go through some of the, what the actual things they are and what they have. Uh, on the top, we have a small solar panel, and on the front, we have a bunch of SMDs on um, PC boards, aluminum boards, actually, and all the way around the bottom and on the sides. A motion sensor in the middle and an on-off switch on the front and two mounting holes on the top and they're flat on the back and they come with also come the package comes with two at 3m adhesive pads uh, some mounting screws an actual screw position marker which uh, kind of works the same way as if you do this you just lay it on the on the wall okay stop with the focus there we go i don't think the focus is working real there we go and an instruction manual regards the modes so what they have uh, let's see here they have basically three modes basically it's click once it blinks once and that, that is basically a standard um, motion mode itself. So when once during the day, it doesn't pick up motion like most of these motion lights do. But when at night, they will actually pick up motion. They'll stay on for roughly 15 seconds, then they'll turn off in mode one. And if you go to mode two, it makes two blinks. And what that does, it has a night light mode, same as what your garden uh, light lights would be, a much lower lumen, sort of probably around 30 to 40 lumens, I guess, or maybe a little less. So when, it, when it's at night, they'll actually turn on on the motion mode and when that turns off it'll go into a dimmer mode motion or a mode three actually basically it's a garden light mode so it's a little bit lower you can probably see some small bit of pwm in the camera because it actually has a small bit of pwm it's not really really bad but it's noticeable when you walk by it but in this mode it, it draws very low amper like amps from the actual battery and to runtime test gives it around seven to eight hours and then it just shuts off uh, and another click turns the light off completely. Uh, one interesting thing about these uh, that I like is that the, uh, these are the first ones I've ever tested or actually used that has a lithium ion 18650 battery on the inside. You'll see a picture posted on the BLF uh, report on the, with the website and the topic there. Because uh, most of these I bought have usually like nickel caviums or nickel metal hydride batteries and uh, in the double A size or even the triple A size for like garden lights, things like that. And uh, this, these, like I said, have a lithium ion, which is kind of interesting. And I'm curious how that would work out in the cold weather. Because lithium ion don't like to be charged when they're really cold, but the fact that the panel is small and it only trickle charges at like probably like 0 0.05 of an amp, with the, I think it's around a half watt or something like that. That's basically what I tested that. So it's going to only trickle charging it, so it's not going to fast charge these batteries. So, you know, after a whole day, it'll top the battery up for what little use, depending on how much your light is going to be on. Uh, most of these lights like that I bought that I've used in the past or, that are similar to this in, in brightness are usually a separate light that have a wire with a separate panel that's mounted like on a roof or something or separately on, on a wall and for shed lights, motion lights or around a farm like a burn, things like that. But these are the first ones I've tested actually have a built-in panel that are actually quite bright. Uh, the high mode I, I'm estimating around 600 to 700 to 800 luminous even though they rate from around 1000 but uh, it's actually quite bright. It's brighter than the ones that I bought before. I have two outside actually mounted on the on the, this trailer by each corner that I paid around $35 to $45, $50 for and they have a separate panel and they run on three nickel metal hydride batteries and they're not nearly as bright as these and they're the same idea, they're motion lights and the motion light angle itself, uh, the testing I got, they seem to work best when they're between four to seven feet off the ground like when they're a lot lower than it because this motion sensor is slightly angled downward when it's actually on the wall so if you mount them between four and seven feet it has seems at the best sense sensitive range for that and you'll start uh, picking up motion from an average of 10 to 12 feet away at night i find in a rain it's a little less but that night yeah normally they come on come on with 10 feet 10 to 12 feet away uh, the tint range of these things uh, is around a 6 to 65k as, as expected like most of these it would be preferable if they actually had around 5k for, for these type of lights but uh, for six Six, you know, 6,065 usual cooler white type tints, which are the same as the ones that I originally bought that I installed on the RV, and plus I have a couple in the backyard near the shed. Um, and as usual, I swap the LEDs out of those and put 5K in one, and I think 4K in another one. 
So these will be a little bit harder to swap because you need uh, you need 100 of these SMDs. And as you can see in there, there's a lot of them in there. But the, for 65, 6,000 K uh, tint, it's not too bad. The color temperature is not too bad. But it's, again, it's an outdoor motion light, so it lights up quite a bit in area. Uh, so yeah, these are, um, like I said, there's two in a pack. They come with everything. I think the price point was around the 35 to $40 range. And they were on sale on their website for, I think it was $22, US which is great. Or $25, I'm not sure exactly. But I'll post a link to their uh, website. Um, so the price is really good for what you get. And the fact that the, they had a lithium ion battery in it. And the, the battery itself is rated for around, uh, I think it was $2,200. But the actual test, when I tested it, uh, where did I have it marked down here somewhere? Yeah, the testing I got on round, I think I'll post a picture of it there. It was around between 1850 to 1900 actual um, milliamp hours for, for the cell. And the internal resistance was around the 100, 150 range. So they're average cells. The rating wasn't bad. It's not as much as the 2200, but it's actually pretty good considering at the 1850 or 1800 to 1900 milliamp hours for each of the cells. And they have one cell in them, basically behind this back. Uh, so yeah, so let me test the battery. Uh, one another advantage of these things that my other ones do not have is a light angle. I find I really like this because the other ones just have a, a like a reflector that has a couple of these that face forward, so they just illuminate a small area in front. When these are mounted on the wall, they illuminate pretty much 180 degrees from the wall to the wall because they have them on the side, plus on the bottom, angle outward, and on each side. So these things have a great coverage of illumination. Which makes them great for like on a fence or a barn over a door or something like that a shed cottage you know so they illuminate the entire area and uh, so that that's one advantage these things got that the other ones did not uh, yeah so yeah so each one of these has 100 leds each a small switch in the front the sensors on the top a small panel on the top uh, the one thing i find it's the advantage of having a panel on the top is that you don't have to worry about the wire and a separate uh, okay focus I'm using my phone for camera. I don't think it works too well for the focus. But yeah, there we go. Um, is that the panels, it's, it's all integrated. The one disadvantage is that when you mount on the wall, you gotta make sure they're either facing south or like southwest to get most of the light. Because if, if you mount them facing north, uh, they're not gonna get a full, very much of a charge. And the same thing applies for if you mount on a wall over where there's an eave or something in, your, in a shadow. So yeah, they're not, they will not work too well in a place that's mounted high underneath an eave or any shadowed area. They need to be mounted somewhere where they're actually facing uh, lots of light, you know, anywhere between the south southwest range, open area, no trees, no eaves, things like that, because the panels built in, you can't mount them separate with a separate panel. Um, so that's the only drawback of these things. But the, uh, but as for like mounting them on like a like a travel trailer or a utility trailer, or your shed, uh, over your door, your house, if you mount them down a couple of feet from the eave, then no problem. They'll get lots of light and uh, they'll charge no problem. So that is one of the things that do work. So yeah, so basically like I showed you the modes originally, the first mode is, when I explained it, uh, sets the light into bright motion only after detecting motion, turns on a high output for 15 seconds and then turns off with no motion detected. It'll stay off then until something walks in front or whatever. And another click, it'll blink twice. That's mode two, which sets it into garden law mode, meaning at, at night it'll turn on the, uh, the garden mode as a glow. And when you walk in front of it, the motion detects it, it goes into the high mode, so it goes much brighter. It'll do that for 15 seconds, and then it'll go into the low mode again. It'll stay in the low mode again for around between six, seven, eight hours, and it shuts off if the battery goes dead. Or from the test I got, it actually ran until it pretty much um, sunrise. And so it actually, cell capacity is pretty good for what, what it actually does on low. It's only drying you know, a, a fraction of a few watts. Uh, and mode three, it'll blink three times, we'll set it into the garden mode only. Now that mode, like I said, has PWM, but this mode is still brighter than most of your average uh, little garden stake lights that you buy that run all night. So these will run pretty much all night in this mode, but there's, there's no motion detection. They, they just stay on the low mode. So if you want, you know, fairly bright garden lights on the wall, leave them on low, great, you can leave them three mode, or in the third mode. And if you're using them on something mobile, like a trailer, you just click the switch and turns it off. So that way there's no motion and it stays off. But interesting, while it's off, the test that I found, the solar panel will still charge the cell and it brings up to around the average of, I think it's around 4.17 volts. So yeah, so that's not too bad. So it keeps the cell charge topped up when it's off. So when you do get to a campsite or if you're in an area, you can just hit the button and it goes back into motion mode or it's motion and nightlight mode or it's nightlight mode only or solar light mode, and then off. Yeah, so, that, so it has some interesting features that the other ones that I bought that I have installed 
don't have. They're either on or off. And a couple of those, you can adjust the sensitivity. That was one thing this thing you can't do. You can't adjust the sensitivity, but sensitivity is pretty good. I give, I give it, like I said, uh, probably eight out of a 10. You know, it does 10 to 12 feet in front. And uh, again, if you mount them between four to seven feet, that seems to be the best angle for actual motion pickup on these things. Uh, yeah, so some of the good points and pros of these things, as I listed off, is a good cost of value. It's a two-pack light, so even if you're paying the full price around $30 to $40, it's still a great deal. I paid that for one of the other ones, and these are much brighter. They have much better features, usable modes, and can be turned off and uh, with the built-in thing. Uh, they're bright, good usable modes. The wide-angle light coverage is another good advantage of these things. And their design is pretty nice. It's kind of ergonomic. It's you know it's flat on a wall. You can mount it pretty flush. So it's, if it's on a moving trailer on the side, it's not you know dragging a lot of wind something like that and uh, it gives you a good coverage of light uh, it pretty much and another advantage it'll run all night on the low mode as a uh, solar light because some solar lights i bought the cheap ones especially they'll run like two or three hours and they shot ah these things with the 1860 cell they'll run all night uh, what i'm estimating it probably drains the cell down to maybe 80 percent of this charge you know like around 3.95 three you know four volt range and this little some trickle panel after you know eight to ten hours of good sunlight during the day it'll top the cell back up no problem so it's not putting a big load on the cell and if it's in motion mode um, you know if you if it turns on a few times during the night it's fine as long as you're not constantly moving stuff in front where it stays on the high mode it won't drain the cell completely down and uh, shut off basically um, the sensitivity like I said the sensor is actually pretty good um, these are great for stuff for many locations like I said cottages trailers uh, farm your barns the back shed anywhere where you don't have electricity you stick these things on a wall somewhere and uh, you have a good motion light but uh, for good uh, use for it in remote locations again uh, the brightness is pretty good like I said estimated around six to seven hour limos probably a little less than a thousand so it's really hard to tell with measuring these things because uh, I haven't really calibrated my sphere the thing uh, completely yet uh, some of the the disadvantage and the cons I find is like the fact that you got the still this mount this thing where there's no shade. You can't mount on Eve and you can't mount it on a north facing wall. You can on a north facing wall, but it's not going to get a good area of light from the sun, so the cell will not get a full charge if it's being used a lot at night. Uh, the other problem is the fact I don't think there is the front is waterproof, the seal, everything on the front is bad, but the back, as you'll see in the pictures on the LF, has a uh, is it still recording, just checking to see, yep. Has no seal. They should put an O-ring around here. So what I do recommend with these things, like most any of the lights that I usually buy for door use, let's see if the focus is actually so I can see the screws here. Yeah, is that remove the back, uh, spray the inside with some light anti-corrosion oil or electronic borders. Stop with the focus thing again. I need to get a good camera for this stuff. Yeah, because it's not focusing. But yeah, just spray it with oil and put some seal sealant silicone or something around the back of this. And then uh, why is the camera doing weird things? But anyhow. Can't get it to focus. Come on, camera. There you go. Yeah, so seal the back and uh, with some sealant and stuff like that. And then you have no problem. And spray the insides with an anti corrosion. That's what I do with every garden light I do. Is I spray them with like a, a light oil, all electronics, like a, a non conductive oil anyway. And they last like, for years longer because it prevents corrosion on, on the circuit boards, things like that, and around the battery. And you have no problem. Like I said, for mounting, you can mount them with either the screws. But I would recommend using the adhesive and the screws if you're going to mount them on a mobile area. Like a trailer or things like that um, so yeah so as for what they are they're actually not bad it's the, little, the manual actually comes in english it shows you the the mode operation things like that um comes with two in a pack and uh, i'll post some pictures on the actual forum of um them in use at night and you know in comparison to other lights that i have that, that's like that to show how bright they are compared to the ones that's on the trailer i'll take pictures at night with those on and this out there and show you the difference and um yeah, and again, I'll post a link to uh, where they're located, iCloverLights.com, and they were sent by Con. And uh, yeah, I give thanks to Con for sending these out for review. And I'm probably going to purchase more of these because I do like them, and I have some good uses for these on my utility trailer and the travel trailer around each side, and in the backyard because uh, they're integrated as all as one sort of thing. And uh, you don't have to worry about separate panels with wires dangling things like that. And they're, they're very clean looking. And uh, yeah. I give them a thumbs up.